it's Liz Yule from Old Stables Crafts. Thank you very much for joining me again today. Today I am starting my Valentine's week. I know it's a month early, but if I'm going to share projects with you, then I need to give you time to order stuff and make the projects. So my first project is going to be using the Heartfelt stamp set and the From My Heart Specialty Designer Series paper. This is gorgeous. I mean gorgeous. So some of it is um, plain, if you can say this is plain. So this is hearts and stripes. This is foiled. So this is foiled in Flirty Flamingo. The colours are Flirty Flamingo and Real Red with white, just to break it up. Uh, this sheet is just gorgeous. I mean, oh, I think I'm almost tempted just to frame it and leave it at that. It is divine. Uh, but the other side is hearts and again, very pretty. Uh, these hearts match the stamps. There's a bundle of uh, stamps, punches. There's the heart stamped bundle, which if you buy the heartfelt stamps and the punches together, you save 10% on the total price. So these you can punch out with those um, punches. Oops, other side is almost like a Scandinavian print. Uh, then we've got a almost candy cane stripe and rows of hearts. And then hearts and arrows, that really ought to be that way up. And then more hearts. And again, you can punch these out with the punches. And remember that um, we've now got, not yet, but we will have on the 4th of February, we will have the amazing coordination uh, packs, which include a pack of paper that you can use your punches on. Um, so, yeah, if I could find it, I would show you the flyer. Uh, but I've hidden it so well, I honestly don't know where it is, which is a shame because I've just... Ah, no, I found it. Ah, it's sad, really, isn't it? So the coordination product release, which is from the 4th of February to the 31st of March. There are dies which match uh, items from Celebration and the new mini. Um, this is for Celebration. And this is Please Just Punch, and it it matches the hearts, the under my umbrella, the tulip and the blossom punch, which is in the celebration catalogue. But you can but will be carrying over to the annual catalogue so you can get it for free now or pay for it later. Up to you. Anywho, uh, let's get on and I will show you the project, which is this one. Uh, it's actually a gift card holder. This is quite a popular design that's going around at the moment so I thought hey there's a bandwagon why don't I jump on it so this is where your gift card would go um, just in here just a standard size gift card um, and yeah I just thought it was fun so let me show you how I've made it I have got the dimensions for international A4 at the moment I don't know if I'm going to be able to get my head around doing them for North American cardstock um, I don't have North American cardstock, so for me to get North American cardstock, I have to cut cardstock down. So it is quite tricky to um, to do it because I have to cut 12 by 12 down, which is a real waste. So anywho, um, right, I'm starting with a flirty flamingo base, and this is half a sheet scored down the middle, and then I've scored again at one and three quarters or four and a half centimeters. The measurements for International A4 will be on my website, both in metric and in imperial, so don't worry about those. So all we're going to do is fold our card in half, and this would be a standard tent fold card, and then we're going to fold this piece back, like that, and that's our basic shape. I've got a piece of vellum, which I will use first. I've got a piece, just a scrap of Whisper White. Um, then I've got real red cut at three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. Another piece of real red that is one and three quarters by three and seven eighths. So there's a theme going here. Uh, some Whisper White three and three quarters square. 
and another piece for the inside. Another piece that is um, three and three quarters by one and five eighths. And then patterned paper, I have got uh, this is three and five eighths square. This is the other side of the same pattern. This is three and five eighths by one and a half. Then I've got two and a half by three and seven eighths, and three and seven eighths by. Ooh, ooh, I didn't measure it. Uh, three and seven eighths by, 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 one and a half. Oh, I did measure it. No, I didn't. No, that's that that I measured. So I need to write that down. Three and seven eighths by one and a half. Ha, huh, phew. Right, so these bits I'm going to pop to one side for the moment whilst we do our stamping and our heat embossing. I'll just pop those in there. I will also be using... Uh, one of the hearts that are in the heart doilies, you get 40, 20 or each of flirty flamingo and real red, and the reverse is white, so you can do all sorts of exciting things with that. Uh, Tammy White over in the US um, pressed one into Versamark and then heat embossed it to make it silver, uh, about three layers of heat embossing. So yeah, all sorts of things you can do with them. Right, so I'll need that as well, so I'll pop that with my other bits. I'm taking the Happy Valentine's Day stamp, uh, and then I'll be using this one as well, and so lucky to have a friend like you are the three, three stamps that I will be using. So this one, which has got a piece of black stuck to its bottom for some reason, um, I'm going to go to the other end of my scrap and ink up so that you've got ink everywhere. Do not go mad with your ink. If you have got a wet ink pad, as mine is, do not go, you know, too viciously into it. And I am going to use my pierce mat. I don't often, but because this is basically a solid stamp and it's photopolymer, I'm going to. And just to try to reduce the amount of staining on my stamp, because all of the red inks stain, I'm just going to make sure that I clean that off really quickly with my apparently clean um, chamois. That's the word I'm looking for. While I've got the flirty flamingo out, she says, having just pop it, popped it away, I'm going to take one of the squares from the inside of the card and just stamp in the middle so lucky to have a friend like you. And I'm not worrying about the piercing mat for this because it's not a solid stamp. Um, so it's it's easier to get a good image, particularly as I've got a whole wadge of paper underneath my um, grid paper. So that's those bits. Let me just grab my um, straight heart punch and punch that out and then I need my piece of vellum and my ooh, where is it oh there it is my uh, lace heart and I'm just going to add some embossing powder uh, uh, embossing powder embossing buddy it's sad isn't it I've had a busy day packing up product shares so um, if you've ordered a product share from me Hopefully they will go in the post very soon. Stamp that down. And grab, I'm going to use my shimmer white embossing powder. Don't need those bits now, so let's get those out of the way. Um, I like to give it a bit of a shake, uh, because otherwise you can end up with lots of shimmer at one end and lots of white at the other. But that looks pretty even to me. So that's good. Pop the lid back on and grab my heat tool. So I'm just going to heat that up. So I've got all sorts of things planned for this week for Valentine. Some of them are going to be very obviously Valentine. Some are going to be less obviously Valentine. 
Uh, I'll be using old products, new products, all sorts. Now, strangely for me, I'm going to come in underneath because it's vellum. And I'm not using my trusty cheese board. It's scary! But I have found, particularly with the shimmer embossing powder uh, on vellum, that you get very much more of a, a holographic look. I don't know if I'm picking that up a bit. Um, if you do it from underneath, if you do it from on top, it looks more silver and less holographic. Um, and I thought a bit of holographic would be quite nice. So I've got the scallop punch. And you get both these punches in the one pack which is wonderful because, as you're about to find out, they layer. So that's that. So this sits very nicely on there. So even if you were punching it out of coloured cardstock, you get that nice um, kind of border. That's the word I'm looking for, isn't it? really is sad. Uh, so I'm going to cover my part of my heart with some tear and tape. I know tear and tape will show through vellum but I'm going to be covering with the um, the solid whisper white so I'm not too worried about that. So we'll pop all that down, take that up and this one. So I hope you are enjoying the mini catalogue and you're enjoying celebration. I'm I can't believe that we're already two weeks through. Um, so, yeah, uh, do remember that celebration items are only while stocks last. So don't miss them. If there's anything you want, get it sooner rather than later. Uh, it's £45, a qualifying order before P&P. So I'm just going to pop this up. Um, and then you get a level one item. If you spend £90 in any one order, then you can either have a level one, sorry, two level one or one level two item. Um, and just keep going with your maths. Uh, and remember, it's any one order. And if you use the host code, of course, you get my wonderful um, customer rewards program as well. So I thought that was quite pretty. Anyway, so let's now stick everything together. We've kind of done most of the bits that we need to do. There's only one other thing that I need to do. So that's going to go there, which is I'm going to hold my piece of designer series paper that goes here. I'm going to hold it against the edge where I'm going to stick it, except I'm not sticking it against the edge, but so that it's the right gap here and here and then hold that, grab my non-scalloped heart punch, just make sure that that's straight and then just come in with your, you need to hold it a little bit further down, come in with your heart punch and get it as even as you can, I'm only going to go by eye and punch and then you can stick that down and get a nice little uh, scallop round. And I thought that was quite a neat way of using your heart punch. Let's just burnish that down a bit better. So I'm going to start with the inside and work out, which I know is a bit weird. But hey, when was I ever th anything but weird? So a little bit of liquid adhesive. And that's really because I want to get right up to those punched edges and then line this up so it's got an even spacing all the way round like that and then this piece which is deliberately short because it's going to be tucked in there uh, so rather than waste lovely designer series paper I thought I would trim it to the least I needed that goes in here and again I'm just looking for an even spacing ideally so that it lines up across here which that does and then 
the smallest little bead of liquid adhesive along the edge. I prefer using um, the multi-purpose liquid adhesive than tear and tape because you're less likely to get a kind of funny sticky feel on the inside. Then burnish that down really well and I'm going to do it from the other side as well. And then that is that bit dealt with. Then let's mount everything up. So those are for the outside. So let's do the inside first. So I'm going to build this from the bottom up. So pop that down. Oops. And then while that's there, let me grab our stamped bit. And you really do not need very much adhesive. Um, the worst thing you can do is put, ooh, that's wrong. That's not the right size. That's the mat for the outside. That's why. That's the one for the inside. That's fine because this is going to get covered up. So let me just pop this down here. Uh, I was just saying, the worst thing you can do is um, put too much glue down. Um, so fortunately, that's going to get covered up. So let's let's stamp this, shall we? Uh, that's the stamp we need. Huh. You see, we all make mistakes. Fortunately, that one didn't matter because it's all going to get hidden. Right, as I was saying, the worst thing you can do is stamp in the wrong place. Uh, apparently it's not the worst thing you can do. Um, and just pop a little bit of glue on there. Line that up, ideally, so that it's straight. There we go. And then, actually I'm going to go straight on here, do a wiggle. They are the very smallest of margins, so I sometimes find it easier to pop something onto a wet surface than try and put down something that's wet. Um, I just find it easier to hold the dry thing and put it onto the wet thing. If you see what I mean. So this is dry and I can hold it nice and firmly and then wiggle it onto the wet glue. So we're already halfway with this, so that's good. So adhesive on there. And again, I'm going to put the glue down first and then put the dry thing onto it. There we go. Oh, I know what I've done. Ha! Never mind. So this is going to be slightly different from the other one. Uh, what I failed to do is put this down. So I'm just going to do a bow on this one. <clears throat> really, I shouldn't be crafting today for some reason. Probably because I've done the project sh product shares, my brain is in cutting lengths and is in that sort of, you know, I don't really care. I've just got to cut things in half mode as opposed to concentrating on what I'm meant to be doing. So tear and tape onto the back of our heart, but only on the half because the other half is going to be overhanging. So we don't really want any glue on this side, otherwise it will just close it shut. And then pop this down. And I'm sort of lining it up with the real red rather than with the edge. Don't know why, but that's kind of what I did. Um, so what I was intending to do was that. Uh, what I'll do instead is forget that and just pop the bow on. <sighs> You see, we all make mistakes, even those of us who are supposed to be, in inverted commas, professional. Um, tum -tum. 
so double bunny ear or auntie betty bow depending on how you like to think of these things for me it will always be an auntie betty bow and then trim the ends to a sensible length and grab a glue dot which is how I attached the previous one. Um, no, I think I will still go there. There we go. So, I guess I can ask the question, which do you prefer? The one with the ribbon or the one with just the bow? Um, so there we are. So apart from when one goes wrong, not a difficult card to make. And you've got that lovely um, little tuck for a gift card or something along those lines. So thank you very much indeed for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, warts and all. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Do remember to subscribe if you don't already. If you are in the UK and would like to order any products, I would be thrilled if you would purchase through my online store. There are links to that below. There's a link to the website with the dimensions and some close-up photos and all that good stuff. Thank you very much indeed, and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. 